So here we are with the first game of the Exeter Store Championships held at Clifton Road Games on the 24th of January 2015. Uh, we are netrunners.co.uk and we are pleased to present to you for your viewing, amusement and enjoyment uh, Ryan on the left uh, from Worcester Sporting Andromeda and Dave Hoyland there on the right playing his Replicating Perfection deck, affectionately termed The Crusade. Uh, again, those of you that have watched the previous casts that I've uploaded will know a little bit what it's about. It is a Grail deck and it is an arduous task to face. So although he won't be taking advantage of Andy's nine card hand with the sweeps week, oh it is not a lot of fun. It's very important for Andromeda to get those breakers down, not to lose them in hand to net damage, and just to play this cautiously and carefully as humanly possible. Um, both these guys are very good players and unfortunately both of them were in the car that I took down to Exeter, which is often the way. So I'm there kicking around doing diddly squat, being out of the top four cut, and uh, these guys are enjoying themselves and living the life of Riley, uh, although again having played against this RP deck I think I probably would have been uh, preferred to be out of the cut than not. So uh, Dave's starting off with a nice ice install, uh, Riley I'm going for a hedge fund security testing, which is never ideal against RP. Very much they're going to ice up their centrals as a matter of course anyway, and uh, so it suddenly becomes a little bit less effective unless you can get some uber efficient breakers down on the board. And giving some thought here as to what else he wants to play, he wants to try and make it cheap. Uh, he must have run archives and then run the remote, I guess. So uh, he'll trash the mental health clinic. I'm not sure about that. He's going to discard two quality times, so he's obviously not looking to draw up too much there. Not a great start for a, for an Andy deck, but at least he got rid of the mental health clinic. Uh, yeah, not sure about that. Not sure, but he is going to ice up the uh, archives and just thought another and take a credit and pass the turn. Uh, security testing suddenly becomes a little bit less ideal, but he is going to play a data sucker as well. Uh, he's going to nominate where he's going to put it. Um, I think he's putting on an archive there. I can't hear the audio, unfortunately. I can't talk and hear audio at the same time. My brain just doesn't work. Ah, there we go. That's that's perfect. Thank you very much, Ryan, for being so considerate to us all. So it is on archives. Uh, he will then play a fairy and he'll draw a card and pass the turn over to Dave, at which point he will res the other mental health clinic he has in his deck. I think mean, he's got three, obviously, but uh, and he will draw seeing a Jackson Howard. And looks like he had a Nisa. He's got an NPD, I think, in hand there. He's got one agenda at the very least. He's going to install that Jackson Howard. And uh, is he going to take money or is he going to draw up some cards with it? That is indeed the question. Looks like he's going to draw just one. So possibly faking out another mental health clinic. I'm not sure. Maybe just leaving it on the board. He's going to take some money as well and then pass the turn. Uh, going over then to Ryan. Uh, he's going to leave it on our archives. He's then going to draw. I kind of wish he had a kind of a Mr. Lee set up here. Uh, possibly Masanori, obviously with a data sucker on the, and a security testing on the board as well. The only piece missing is the uh, is the Desperado. Looks like he's going to run archives to have a pop. I don't think Dave is going to res. I'm not sure if that's what's happening or not. I'll just have to wait and find out. He's certainly giving it some thought, whatever it is he's looking to do. Um, yeah, I think it is. Well, yeah, it was a security testing run. He's going to play the Excalibur. He's going to res it early. I don't think he necessarily probably wanted to do that um, because now he, you know, Ryan knows that he can security test there for two credits and a data sucker. Um, but at the same point, it does allow him the flexibility of him not being able to do it and run on remotes at the same time. But if you're just looking to take money in a turn, uh, the Excalibur isn't going to deter you too much. And I guess if he gets a John Massonora on the board, suddenly it looks like incredibly good value still. Um, I think Ryan's is looking to discard down. Uh, again, oh, special order. That would be a surprise. He's only got the ferry on the board at the moment. Not sure what else he has in hand. It looks like he's going to draw for his last click. I think... What, oh, no, maybe not. Sorry, I'm completely off the planet here in terms of what click we're on. So he draws. He plays an Esperado. Does he still have a click left? Oh, I can't even remember. No, he doesn't. So he's discarding. He's passing the turn. Dave, seeing the Nisei Mark II in hand, uh, he will raise the Jackson Howard and draw two. Uh, seeing a hedge fund, which is, I think, I imagine is exactly what he wants at this point. Um, maybe then draw again to ditch the NEPD. Or, yeah, I think that's what he's going to do. He's going to draw another two, seeing another Sunju. And I was, again, I'm assuming here he'll play a hedge fund, which is exactly what he does. And then he's got to discard, and again, a, presumably discard the uh, NEPD from hand. Probably leave the Nisei in hand. Let's have a look and see what he gets rid of. Uh, I think that was indeed the NAPD. And maybe an interns. Uh, I think he needs to discard one more. Yep. Uh, he's not quite sure what he's going to get rid of. 
He's got two interns in hand, so I'd be surprised. Oh, he's looking at ditching ice. Maybe the Sorogi. I guess he's not flush with cash at the moment. No, he kept the Sorogi on the board. I'm guessing that's an interns, but uh, we will wait and see. I didn't see it and make it out, unfortunately. Uh, I think Ryan's already clicked first uh, for a card. Don't quote me on that. He's leaving the security testing there on archive, which makes good sense. He's got an easy security testing target at the very least. And the game begins to draw a crowd. As you can see people hovering among the periphery of the of the camera. So Dave not necessarily completely set up here. He, he's a little bit ice and he isn't able in a position to really get his uh, sundews online. So the early game here is looking pretty strong for Ryan. And that being said, you can't risk running early against Grail. He's probably missing a trick here not trying to get some breakers down and, and, and make him red some ice. He's going to do it anyway, and he, again, you run the risk here of losing cards. This is the problem. You really do run the risk of losing cards. If that's a Galahad and he's got a Lancelot in hand, suddenly you're crying. It's an Eli, so it's not too bad, uh, which you can just kind of bounce off it. But I don't think he's seen a lot of Grail ice early on here. And, uh, you know, Grail ice, is, it's very combo-wombo in a lot of respects. You, you need to see some of it early. You need to have the rest in hand. Um, it's putting the right pieces down. And then making sure you retain the correct pieces in hand as well. Because uh, obviously, you know, trashing programs here against Andromeda could be very, very strong. He is looks, looking like he's going to try and set up and install his uh, Sunju server. And then he's going to draw two with Jackson Howard. Uh, I think, again, looking probably for the Grail Ice at this point in time. Although he's discarding another piece of the puzzle there. And he's going to res the Sunju and pass the turn over to Ryan. So again, he can't hit archives and then go and check it. He can hit R and D and check it. So he can just bounce off the Eli, or maybe just click, click through it and then run on the uh, the remote and uh, try and get rid of the Sunju. You do kind of have to get rid of Sunju's, but it's finding the time to be able to do it. Interestingly, Res is running the HQ ice, and he's got an Ise there in hand. So I'm guessing he probably wants to res whatever's there. It may leave him a little bit less economically stable. Uh, it's a Lotus Field, so uh, it's going to cost him a few bob, but he's going to be getting a lot of that back with his Sunju Mental Health Clinic anyway. He's going to dirty laundry archives for the security testing money, and obviously the uh, data sucker token as well, so that's a really good bit of economy there for Ryan, putting him back up into uh, the kind of zone he needs to. But that Lotus Field it could cause him long-term problems. Um, it's all about how he's going to deal with it. The data sucker certainly isn't going to do any good. Uh, Dave not willing to run any risks, so installing another piece of ice over HQ, making it even less appetizing. But no, wait. Uh, he's going to draw first of all. He sees an NAPD, so assuming yeah, he's going to do exactly what he did before, and ice up over HQ, and then take credit and pass the turn. So, oh no, I think, yeah, sorry, he uh, took money for Sanji. So again, Ryan here, again, you would assume he was possibly looking at the potential of a siphon play. I don't know how he's going to get past the Lotus Field yet at this stage, but actually what he's going to do is play out an RDI. Uh, for four, he could run click-click and see two cards, and then still gain a credit from his Desperado and a Data Sucker token, which isn't too shabby for two clicks. Uh, oh, he's playing another RDI out. I'm surprised he didn't take advantage of it and, and go for the, the run, unless he's got a Corroder in hand. He doesn't. So again, I think I'd possibly misplay there. I think the better play probably would have been just to spend the clicks and have a look and see what he could see off the top of R&D. Um, not so much an R&D lot, but at the very least, try and keep him honest. Uh, let's see what he would have won. Uh, it looks like a uh, quandary, I want to say. Not sure. It could be another. It could be another Excalibur, actually. And what a great card that is in uh, in RP definitely a good to include. There would have been a future perfect though that he would have seen, so there would have been a side game bid at the very least there if he had gone through and run with just the one R&D and click click. Uh, he is going to put another piece of ice now over R&D which makes perfect sense given he's got two R&Ds out. Again, another reason why maybe putting two down in one turn without a run is, is not necessarily the best move. Um, you kind of then indicate how huge a threat you have on R&D and you have to respond to it. Um, probably would have been better off seeing the cards, but yeah, you're not to know at any point in time. But certainly you've got a huge amount of central pressure now on the board at this point in time. You've got to assume he's got a legwork in hand at the very least. There's the zoo, so he does have the ability to get through the Lotus Field for a cost, four credits. Uh, he will special order as well. Uh, I'm not sure what he's looking for here, probably the Corroder. 
I'm going to guess, which looks to be his next card. <laughs> yes, indeed. And he's on top of the deck. Isn't that always the way with Special Order? Never mind. It's only cost him an extra credit, I suppose. And suddenly we've got the full suite out. So, uh, oh, I can't see the fairy. Not long term, but it's not too bad either. And as it stands, he doesn't need it anyway until he sees the uh, the Kamoinu or the uh, Surugi anyway. Or obviously the uh, the potential Lancelot, in which case Mimic will be a decent answer. And most decks these days are packing Mimic for Architect alone. But obviously it works quite well against Lancelot as well. And again, that Excalibur, it really isn't doing a great deal of good at this point. Um, again, I'm assuming Ryan would have guessed what it was anyway. So I mean, the surprise factor. Again, as soon as any ice on Archives goes on for RP, you just got to assume it's Excalibur. Um, it is the, absolutely the logical place for it. They run two in the deck, so you can never discount another central for having it. But uh, you, you just know Excalibur is going to get put on archives. There's an inevitability about it which cannot, unfortunately, be escaped. It's got a couple of Caprice in hand, I think, or at least one. Uh, but not really a great remote to go into, and he still really needs that uh, that Sunju on the board for economy. Um, he's not in a position to be able to start scoring out, but I think he's going to look to start building this server to be able to go and do that. So he's going to put another piece of ice over that Sunju and uh, just kind of wait and, and get it set up really. Which again makes perfect sense. And he looks like he's going to install in. So it could be the Caprice that, you know, he has put the Caprice in there now at this point. Um, getting ready to score. And um, we'll see if that is the case. If he can score that again, that early Nisei Mark II. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, that is pretty much it. Once that Nisei goes on the board, especially with the Caprice on the board as well, you've got all kinds of problems. And this is why Grail RP is so strong. It just defends you early doors, gives you early game uh, defence, assuming you draw the right pieces, of course. Uh, but then that's the case of any deck. And as soon as that first agenda gets scored, very much in the same situation as an NEH deck or any kind of NBN deck with Astro in it, you're facing a clock. And this is more of a clock of taxation than of time, but... Uh, it is brutal nevertheless. And uh, you know, RP going from strength to strength. It'd be interesting to see if Claude affects it particularly, um, whether it becomes an even stronger archetype as people look to avoid um, NEH fast advance or perhaps other fast advance methods and turn to RP and if more people then begin to tech against it because of Claude. It'd be interesting to see how the meta reacts to that, that powerful car that is rumoured to be being released in the next pack. We will see. Uh, so he's going to, uh, I think it's a Count Siphon run, or Legwork run, can't remember which one it was. And he's going to go through the Lancelot with the Fairy, and he's going to break the Lotus Field with the, uh, the Sioux. I think it wasn't a Count Siphon run, sorry. So he's going to take a lot of money and a couple of tags, and that's a, that's a strong account side from play at this point in time. It leaves Dave with just a paltry five credits, and uh, suddenly we're looking like it could swing. Another Fairy goes down, so that's not bad at all. And uh, definitely going to cause Dave some aggravation, though. Doesn't have the money to go in and defend the remote. Which I think probably would have been my target here at this point. I'm surprised to see him go on R&D rather than going on the remote. But uh, he will run and see a Grim. So it is a good job he put the Fairy down, at the very least. But again, with three cards accessed, it's not going to be the worst thing in the world. Uh, but I think good remote control is, is really important against RP, denying them the opportunity to get a super server up with Caprice, with Ash, and obviously with a Nisei token, because as soon as that Nisei token gets scored, you're not going to score the next agenda, that's for sure. Looks like he's going to... I'm surprised... well, it doesn't really matter, I guess. He's going to spend the the data sucker tokens uh, break with Fairy. Uh, obviously going to gain bad pub for that as well. He will then go through on Eli and break he will... is that a NAPD or is that something to trash? Hmm... I know he's not running daily business show in this deck. Uh, nothing there, and nothing there. Three cards accessed, nothing gained. Uh, he has got a few agendas in hand, so it probably wasn't unfortunate. I think there's another mental health clinic we saw off the top there. He's debating whether to trash it or not. Probably the right call not to bother, especially not with the Sunju and a mental health click on the board. Uh, Dave now having to play a waiting game effectively, so he's going to install that mental health clinic all over there, I think. Uh, having to play a waiting game to get his money back up to something sensible and try and keep Andy out from a taxation point of view. He's going to take two credits and pass the turn, another two for Sunju. Um, 
So yeah, it's going to be an interesting situation now because again, Ryan is in a good way. He's in a strong position. Uh, that account siphon really did swing the game, and though he didn't get any joy of R&D, he still has a huge R&D threat. But he's got to deal with that uh, grim long term. Mimic may help, but also then data as sucker tokens become even more important as well. Um, but you know, again, he can build up at least one each turn uh, via a uh, security testing on archives. Limits him for the rest of the turn, so he can't do it every turn. But it's, uh, I think he's probably in a good place here, not in a bad place. Uh, can certainly get decent access now on HQ, so a legwork could very much be on the cards. Uh, can break whatever he chucks out with Lancelot, and then break the Lotus Field for four. Another siphon obviously would be huge, and would possibly swing the game completely in his favour at that point, putting RP on zero credits, and though his centrals are defended, nothing else is, so you can have free reign on his remote and, and really try and clean him out. And there we go, so that is it, in fact the second siphon, I think that's a very good play. Um, so he will uh, break with for one credit, I assume the bad pub that he just gained from the Grim, he will then pay four to get past the... Uh, Lotus Field. Dave will res a Caprice just to reduce the money that uh, Ryan gets from it, which again is definitely the smart play. And now it's a question of whether you drain three or whether you access a card. I think draining three is probably still the smart play. Um, particularly if you're thinking you might go through on the remote as well. Uh, so he will drain three, indeed. Uh, Dave will res another mental health clinic, taking him back up to two. I think I probably would have liked to siphon into the remote play there, going in and trashing the Caprice, the Sunju, um, and just cleaning him out economy-wise, really causing problems for him over the long-term game, leaving that Sunju there, and he certainly had had opportunities to go in and score, uh, to go in and take it. It's possibly the biggest misplay, I think, at the moment. Um, but again, that siphon is exactly what Ryan needed at that point in time and swinging the game back in his favour. Anyone that says a Count Siphon is dead is absolutely off their rocker. Uh, mental Health Clinic, no, not Mental Health Clinic, Medical Research Fundraiser, giving Dave money and Ryan some money as well. And uh, this is where Dave will say, close the counts. Ah! He's not running close the counts, but if he did, obviously it would be hilarious, especially after a Medical Research Fundraiser. Uh, Ryan's going to draw. But I mean, that's not a bad turn there for uh, for RP. He's already back up to scratch. But here comes the legwork, so a lot of HQ pressure. Uh, is he going to reveal any more from? No, he's not. So it's going to cost him the bad pub and four credits to get through. And he's going to see three cards. And you know, he has the opportunity here to take the Nisei out of hand before Dave sees it. And there, in fact, it is. That's one. Uh, so an intense uh, a Sunju, which I think you've got to trash. And uh, pass the turn over. So taking the Nisei out of hand, huge, hugely important cannot overemphasize how big a deal that could be. And suddenly Dave looking a little bit less happy. He's got an APD, so he did whiff on the NAPD there, but uh, certainly he's not necessarily in the position to score it at this stage. He probably has little desire to, to be fair. Um, it's still taxing that HQ run at the end of the day. It's still costing him four credits. He's going to put another piece of ice there over the remote. And you know, he, doesn't, he doesn't want to trash his Sunju at this stage. There is absolutely no way he wants to trash the Sunju. And it will be interesting to see if uh, what he chooses to do here. Ah, it's interesting. He is going to trash the Sunju, so he's going to install in advance uh, the NAPD there, but obviously Ryan doesn't know that it's it could be a Nisei. Um, uh, that is always the issue here. If, if it's the Nisei, it's all kinds of problems. Um, from a relatively good position, it could turn utterly disastrous in every kind of way. So the uh, security testing still sat there on the on one of the remotes. I still probably prefer it on archives, but obviously it depends on whether he's planning on hitting remotes and other centrals as well. You can always hit it last if that's the case. I think it's still probably strong on the archives, if for no other reason than to get another data sucker token, which aren't useless at this point, with an Eli and a Grim on R and D. And I think that's probably the only missing puzzle he piece of puzzle he has. He, he needs another way of getting through that grim. But I'd be surprised here not to see an R and D poke. Yes, indeed, there we go. I am omniscient, ladies and gentlemen. So he will obviously lower the strength with uh Data Sucker, and he'll break the Eli with Corroda. He will see another Nisei off the top, so that is 
Really good. I mean, you've only seen a fair few cards, so I mean, it's probably roughly in keeping with the amount of cards you've seen there on R&D. That's, you know, sixth card access now, and obviously you've got one out of HQ as well, with a legwork. But making the right plays here, I think, and um, as long as that's not the last Nisei, I think he's probably going to be in good shape. He's going to dirty laundry into the uh, the security testing server and take big money. And past the turn, uh, Dave's going to just score out that NAPD. And pass the turn back over. So it's four points to two. Ryan's taking the very important Nisei Mark II pulls. And Dave, well set up. Again, his centrals are well defended. Um, you know, he's got a good economy on the board now at this point with the two mental health clinics. So obviously he's had to trash the Sunju, but he has got an interns in hand to bring it back if it gets a little bit desperate. And oh, that's interesting. So he actually doesn't. Oh, he can't, of course. <laughs> ah, in typical Hoyland fashion, um, we actually forget about the bad pub that's on the board, and so he cannot score out the NEPD um, because it is now currently five to advance rather than four. So he has to, in fact, just double advance it, and uh, or triple advance it rather. And he has to leave it on the board. And Caesar Jackson Howard, which he's going to leave there, I think it's probably the right call. He can't afford it. He's going to shut down the Grim, which is another good call because, again, if he resists that well, again, it's another bad pub. And suddenly it's going to take two full turns to take out the. Uh, to score another NEPD. And we know there's at least another two in the deck somewhere. And he is going to run R&D. Um, so Dave, once again, struggling to deal with that, that bad pub um, with the NEPD. Not ideal. But uh, Ryan rightfully pointing out that he can't score the blasted thing at this stage. Uh, looks like he's going to security testing last click. So don't forget, folks, any PDs, bad pub, bad mix. <laughs> I think Dave at this point, actually, when he looked, went to redesign his deck uh, a little bit, he uh, decided that it was time to get rid of Grim from this deck just for the sole reason that he always forgets he can't score any <laughs> PD, uh, which is one advancement. So, uh, yeah. I think he made the change to his deck, if only because it was causing him major aggravation. So he will score the NAPD, so nothing really changed there, and uh, he's got two clicks left. Uh, I think he may be considering internsing, internsing the yep, indeed, the Sunju back into that remote server and passing the turn back over. Uh, it makes good sense. Interns doing great work in this deck. And uh, Ryan will play another same old thing, so I've siphoned back in play. Uh, Dave on 10 credits. So it looks like clicks two and three, and again I'm assuming here it is going to be a siphon, yes indeed. Uh, so it's going to have two subs, which is going to cost him two credits to get through, and then four to get through the Lotus Field, at which point Dave will lose five, Ryan will gain ten, and another two tags! And so it goes on. Uh, siphon number three, again not quite as big a tempo swing as it was uh, the second time round, but still hugely important. And uh, it will be fascinating to see if he can go on and uh, continue to gain those accesses that he needs. Again, r and is still vulnerable, and if he does go ahead and, and res that Grim, that's suddenly two reoccurring credits per run, and the taxation aspect is going to look a little bit less taxing, so I don't think Dave will res that Grim a second time. Um, especially not data suckers on the board, it's just not worthwhile. It's only going to cost him one credit to break, and it's going to give him that reoccurring. Um, obviously makes sense to de-res it for that, exactly that reason. He's going to have a poke at R&D, and again, Dave isn't going to res the Grim, so he will run through. He'll see one card, and see two cards, and oh, he's going to trash the Jackson Howard, and see three cards, no joy, no dice, and Dave living on the edge here, oh, it's only going to take one unlucky future perfect, and suddenly, it's going to be game over, so all he needs to see now, get one lucky access on a, on a, a future perfect with a good side game guess, and uh, this game is done and dusted, Dave only on two points, but in a good position, still in a good place, even after three siphons, he's still sat on seven credits, and he's got a decent res, a decent ice res. It's just the question of how Dave can potentially close out the game, and whether he can close out the game, and whether Andy being set up this early and this well is going to cause him a lot of aggravation. Those two RDIs, uh, always the potential problem of the uh, n another siphon, perhaps, or another legwork. He knows he's got R and D's becomes the game all of a sudden, so I think it's the right call. Be interesting to see what that piece of ice is. He's obviously got a full suite up, uh, possibly a Merlin. That's going to cause him a lot of taxation issues. He's not going to be able to do that often if it is a Merlin. 
Um, even though the data sucker tokens will help, it's still going to cost him a few bob. I'm surprised to see him leave the Grim there. There's the legwork. So again, still putting huge pressure across the centrals on R&D and on HQ. Ryan playing a very, very good game here. And it's all, only going to take one access. And uh, this could be very much it. I don't think he's got anything in hand. He doesn't. He only sees two cards, in fact. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me, ladies and gentlemen. <coughs> <coughs> ah, dying. Do apologise. <coughs> Seem to breathe the wrong way there a little bit. Going to sound a bit husky for a while. While I try not to uh, cough my guts up in front of you. But I'll be damned if I'm going to go through and do 25 minutes of commentary again. <coughs> so, Dave survives another round. Uh, R&D looking perhaps a, <coughs> a little bit more secure. He, Ryan now, however, has the knowledge of knowing that there's nothing in HQ. And that's not nothing. Uh, double negative galore. But, you know, it's true. He Knowing there's nothing there is important. There is an Issei there now, though, however. And he's going to immediately install advanced that. He's not going to leave it in hand. And I think that's probably the right call. And if he gets that scored, this game spins on its head once more. That's the last Nisei. And is it enough for him to then go out and win the game? Uh, he knows there's only going to be another two or three agendas left in the deck now. Three, four, four, four. Two NAPDs, one, two Future Perfects, presumably. <coughs> three Future Perfects, sorry. So yeah, five. Okay, forget me, ignore me. I'm talking gibberish. So he's going to run R&D. Uh, there isn't that now, so it was a good guess on my part. I again assume that probably would be the Merlin with two subroutines. So he's got a. Uh, it's not great, it's not ideal. Yeah, again, Yogg becomes a lot more appealing in this kind of matter, even though Lotus Field is a pain in the backside. Merlin is a taxation nightmare um, if you don't have data suckers and the like. So he'll run, he'll see one, he'll see two, he'll see three, no joy. Uh, no NAPDs, which I guess is what he was possibly hoping for with four credits left in the bank ready to score it. Uh, Dave will greedily uh, res, uh, sorry, will advance in and, and uh, get the Nisei Mark II, giving him that all important token to use to score out the final agenda. And Ryan now facing a clock, and he knows it. As soon as any agenda gets installed double advanced, he's got to assume that's the game-winning agenda. He's got to assume that's the, the future perfect for the win. Dave only sat on three credits. Obviously, two more coming in via the uh, mental health clinics. Uh, Ryan ne here needing probably to build up a little bit of money, I'm going to suggest, and just try and deny him the opportunity of, of scoring out of that remote. Uh, but with a Caprice and with an Issei token, oh, I don't think money is going to help. It's all about time now at this stage, and obviously the click compression of RP doing its thing. So uh, I think he's going to go through an R&D again, still seeing a Merlin with two subs. Uh, he's not going to res the Grim, and uh, he'll go through the Eli. He'll see one, which is a Galahad. Two, another piece of ice. Three, another piece of ice. No joy. And um, He just needs a kind of a bite at uh, a future perfect here to see out the game, but from a completely dominant position, Ryan is now really facing the clock. And uh, This is exactly how RP can just turn a game on its head sometimes. Um, he's just having a quick look at the first piece of ice again, I think, but uh, it's fine. He's going to draw into hand now. Oh, he's going to go again. Sorry, right, okay. So I don't think he did a... Uh, I don't think he did his mandatory draw. I think that's probably what he missed from the last round. Uh, and so he he didn't actually see the right cards. But either way, it's fine. It was a Sunju on the bottom, uh, which Ryan elected not to trash. Which seems sensible at this point, because uh, he's not going to have time to install that Sunju anyway. Uh, I think, again, is Dave here going to perhaps go for the, mental, the, the medical research fundraisers? And just try and get ahead on economy and get ready to score out via... Uh, the future perfect. If Ryan can keep him R&D locked though, he's going to have real problems, so he needs to make it that much more taxing. And uh, obviously Ryan can't finish without two data sucker subroutines, uh, data sucker virus tokens, sorry, um, because otherwise he can risk that grim and cause him real aggravation, trashing the zoo or, or trashing the mimic itself. He is going to medical research fundraiser for five credits, giving Ryan three. And uh, it seems sensible at this point. Again, as I mentioned in the previous cast, running uh, running them over Celebrity Gift for only for the fact that it's a Grail deck, and so as a result, it's, uh, it kind of needs it. It kind of you don't want to show that you don't have Grail in hand 
or what Grail you perhaps do have in hand. So it's really important. He's going to install. Uh, I think that was the Jackson Howard. I'm going to hazard a guess. I think it was the Jackson. And uh, he, yeah, he needs the extra draw here, I think, more than anything else, to be able to get that last agenda. He needs us to see the future perfect. He's going to inside job R and D. Seems sensible after a Jackson Howard. Uh, after sorry, after a couple of draws there. If he can get a bite, suddenly it's game on. He's not going to res that. He's not going to res the Grim, presumably, because he doesn't have the time or the money to do so. And just in case he sees another NEPD, although it wouldn't win in the game, I think he's probably gunning for the future perfect here completely and utterly. So it's whether he wants to res the Grim or not. He's not going to. Uh, so it's just the Eli to beat, which I think he's just click-clicking through. Uh, oh no, he's not. He's breaking, in fact. So that's a surprise. I could have probably click clicked there and had the same effect without having to spend a fortune. He'll run, he'll see another Galahad, he'll see that Sunji, and he'll see another piece of ice. No no joy there, you've got him getting plenty of accesses. Um, he's certainly seen enough cards here to perhaps warrant winning the game, uh, although he has scored four points, so it's close though, it's very very close. Uh, and Dave still has that long-term problem over R&D that he has to try and deal with. Um, uh, I'm not quite sure how he's going to do it at this point. He's going to leave the security testing... Oh, no. What's he doing? Pass. I don't know what he's doing there. Oh, the security... Yeah, security testing gone! Ha <laughs> ha Ah, jokes! So yeah, Ryan's trying to install the security testing token when well, he has no security testing on the board because Dave trashed it last time. So, uh, yes, yes. Jokes all round there. Jokes all round. Just goes to show that that was probably the right call then, because it causes him a lot of problems. I think he's going to have to have a dig at archives just so that he can uh, gain a data sucker and a credit. It's better than just clicking for a credit at the very least. Uh, he's going to trigger Jackson Howard. Uh, put in, I think, three face down. Uh, again, maybe there's another future perfect in there. I'm not sure if he maybe would have, would, might have ditched. Oh, there's definitely an, oh, two any. Yep, three agendas there. So, I mean, Dave knew that R and D was fairly safe and sound because he'd already ditched three agendas. I think there's only one agenda left there in archives in, in R and D. Sorry, uh, and now the agendas are in there. So all of a sudden, R and D digs become a lot more profitable. Um, so this will be interesting then. Um, all he has to do is draw up into a future perfect, install double advance, and that's probably game. Um, it's just a question of whether it happens, or whether Ryan will get a pick at it, poke at it first. Ryan probably needing to score, either get lucky on a side game, or score via the two, um, two more NEPDs that are left in the deck. And that's, he's not really going to have the time for that. There's a Caprice Nisei, uh, which he may put on R&D, just to keep it nice and tidy. Obviously if he res it he would have to de-res the one that's on uh, in the remote. Uh, I'm not sure whether he'd want to do that but he is going to do it so uh, just to keep him locked out of R&D for as long as humanly possible while he waits to score that last agenda. Or will Ryan get there first? That's the question. Okay, he's got the Nisei token to be able to defend the uh, the remote, I suppose, so it's not awful. He would probably love to see an Ash here and install that into the remote as well, just so that he's got a little bit extra security. Uh, Ryan hurting for money now at this point without security testing as well, although he's got the bad pub, but uh, Dave suddenly getting a lot of credits there on the board uh, with the, the uh, Sunju and the two mental health clinics on the board. Oh no, sorry, it's not a mental health clinic, is it? Sorry, there, it's not a Sunju, rather, I should say. Uh, he is going to run R&D and see three subs on the Merlin. I think it's running, he's running R&D. He could be running HQ. It's costing him an arm and a leg, and this is where Grail really comes into the fore, so it is HQ. He will run, he'll see another piece of ice. I don't think he's got any agendas in hand. Um, but he just, just the act of installing a Caprice on R&D is off-putting enough to not want to run it. It is just a hideous hideous sight. Um, even with two R&D Rs out on the board, you, you, do you really want to do it? Now, there's the future perfect, and this is going to be an absolute no-brainer. It's going to be install double advance, and uh, that's going to be the game. There's no way he can get through on it, and uh, he knows it. He was, he was skint. He had no money. Um, he would either have to spend money breaking stuff on the uh, on centrals, and uh, he just knew he wasn't going to be getting in there 
and Dave, I think probably there, as you could probably see, counting his blessings somewhat. So he goes through to the next game of the top four. We hope you will join us there, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> 